I was natural 90% of my life. I didn't start getting relaxers until my mid 20s. I don't feel like there's a stigma around relaxing your hair. I feel like the time that we're in, whatever makes you feel more comfortable. Hi, I'm Regine, and today I'm getting a cut and relaxer touch up. So growing up, my mom had a hair salon, so I've gone through every single type of hairstyle, braids, weaves. It would take me like an hour just to wash and blow dry it. It's thick, it's long, I'm tired, my arms hurt. I just knew I wanted to cut my hair. I have three sons, I have a business, so I don't have so much time. And now it takes me 15 minutes to wash it, set it, and I'm ready to go. Hey, I'm Greg Gilmore, and today we're gonna to be doing a cut and style relaxer touch up. I've been doing this work for a really long time. It's been about 18 years for me. I love cutting, I love color, and it has a tremendous ability to make you feel different, brand new, and I love producing that feeling in my clients. So we're gonna take care of your hair today. We're gonna do a relax and retouch. Okay. I know you're a wife, a mom, got that hectic work style. Yeah. So we want something nice, easy for you to maintain at home. Okay, I can't wait. So when I'm about to start a relaxer, I like to first apply a base. We wanna protect the scalp. The base will melt with the body temperature, therefore it will spread across the scalp and have a nice coating before applying the relaxer. Do's and don'ts when you're applying a relaxer. You can't scratch before your relaxer. You don't want to shampoo at least two to three days before your appointment. You want to work very quickly and efficiently. I like to start with the back and the napes first because even if she starts to burn prematurely, at least the sides and nape will be straight and you can just get enough tension in the top to smooth it out with the flat irons if it's not all the way straight. Tingling from the client on their scalp is an indication that you should start hurrying up. There's this misconception that you gotta wait until the relaxer is burning before you can rinse it out but that is a myth. The relaxer is really just a lifestyle decision. They had a decline over the past couple of years, but they actually have a resurgence coming up. And so now people are gravitating back to relaxers because they've understood what relaxers are really for. It's very hard work maintaining your natural hair a lot of times. Most people choose to do relaxing because it's easier to maintain their style at home. You know, a lot of women have had really bad experiences in the salon with relaxers and I think that created a negative stigma around getting relaxers done in the salon. So it's just really about proper application. When I'm washing out the relaxer, I like to use two neutralizing shampoos. So I'll shampoo the hair once with the neutralizing and then twice with the neutralizing shampoo. And then third shampoo usually is a moisturizing shampoo just to kind of put moisture back into the hair. Then after the shampooing is finished, I like to condition the hair. I take my client back to the chair and now we're going to do a little rough draft cutting or in other words, wet cutting. And this is to carve out the initial shape that we're gonna have for the cut before her mold. So after our wet cutting, I will mold the hair with a wrap foam just to ensure that everything lays smooth and I will wrap wrap strips around this so that it stays tight and compressed. And we put her under the dryer. This may take about 45 minutes to an hour to dry. And about 15 minutes after she's been sitting under the dryer, I like to take the wrap strips off so that the inside of the mold can dry as well. After my client is thoroughly dry, I like to unwrap it using a blow dryer as well. This just infuses the hair with a little bit more air gives it more movement, and just make sure it's thoroughly dry. I love this shape. I know you don't care what I do. It's fine right now. Whatever what I do, be the bomb. <laughs> and then we'll do some more detailing on the cut. Just to finish it out, this is where we individualize the cut and make it just for her. And so I will go in and just use a sheer over comb method that helps me blur the lines. I'll also use my straight point cutting shear 
to sharpen the cut in certain places that I may have missed while I was wet cutting, add any signature pieces, and just really give it that finish. I like to come in with a half inch flat iron and I will curl from the top and work my way down to the bottom. I add a little bit of serum just to give it that nice sheen, that really, really healthy look. And then I will finish it in the comb out. Whoop, whoop. Hey! Okay! <laughs> oh my gosh, I can't wait to get home and show my husband this. Okay. Wow. <laughs> I love my hair. My expectations were far exceeded today. I just expected it to look nice, but I love the new cut that he gave me. I put it in his hands, I trusted him, and he did not disappoint. So today I think went really well. She looks absolutely amazing. Right now what's trending is, you know, the lace fronts, a lot of commercial extensions. And so that's why I feel like cut and color has been a lost art. You want to maintain your retouches, maybe about six weeks in between each relaxer. I felt that there is a stigma behind relaxed hair, and I just want to let everyone know that it's okay. It's okay to relax your hair. Having a great hairstyle gives you great confidence to do what you need to do for your life. So this cut is a little different than cuts I've had in the past because it's shorter, but I love this new one. I just feel good about it. I think it's gonna work out great for me for these next six weeks.